Alrighty, so most of this video is going to be postscript because I recorded a lot of it while I was uh, kind of doing other things and so I couldn't really talk into the mic, um, other stuff going on in the house and stuff. And it took me a good two days of gameplay, two real days of gameplay to get what I'm going to show you guys. But in this episode, I'm going to show you how I made this ultimate... Um, sword for uh, farming stuff off of monsters. It's got a bunch of really cool uh, enchants on it, and I'm going to show you how I got there. Um, the first thing, though, is that we have gone into spectator mode so that I could show you this design. So we had found this spawner in here, and I've used a design by another YouTuber named 4AM, uh, link to his channel below in the description, to build this out and uh, make it good. It's a, it's a really good design. Uh, there's a few things I had to adjust, which is why we're in spectator, so I can point things out. As you can see, it's a nice big room. Um, what is it? Uh, like uh, 9 by 9 by 9. We put a slab on top to keep zombies from spawning in that slab. The water runs to the bottom here comes into this area here there is soul sand there which is why we needed to go to the nether to begin with with a column of water going up um, and the changes I've made to his design are I dug out the bottom here and I put stairs or not stairs I'm sorry I put um, walls and then this ensures that they just kind of glide over these two block spaces here because they don't want to stay on there um, and then the other change is uh, you'll notice there's an empty I've got glass in this column right here and there's an empty with water going into it that sign holding back the water what that does is that pulls them further just to make sure they get pulled all the way onto that bubble column where they're sent way up here and they go across this thing of ice that we gathered last time just to make sure that they're sliding nicely and then they fall down there I built all of this in survival. I just, uh, when I updated the pack, I lost those recordings. I was going to do them as replay since I wasn't recording, recording them, but I lost my replays because I had to wipe the whole folder and start it fresh when I uh, updated to the latest version of the pack, unfortunately. So it was uh, going to be a cool video, but hey, you know, that is. And anyways, they fall down here. They hit a slab there, which is into a hopper, which goes into this chest. And as you can see, we have gotten a ton of stuff out of these guys. Most of this really good stuff here comes from the named ones that have special abilities. Um, and I put a block of water here when I'm fighting those because a lot of them have f flames. And they'll set you on fire so you can back up into that block of water. Uh, and then this is also where you can farm your XP. And so that's the design for the spawner. Um, now there's a lot more to how we got this sword and we will cover that next in postscript. First I updated the pack to the latest version and I immediately regretted all decisions that led me to this nightmare. Next I went and I rounded up all the librarians and all of the vagrant villagers that we already had at the church and I used the vanilla boat trick to get them moved into place. Some of them definitely came more willing than the others. Looking at the map, I realized that these were actually several villagers together. In fact, there was two teleporters in the area even, and one of them was right outside of what I'm now calling the monastery. This was the moment that I was like, eh, I'm gonna add some more librarians to my collection, I think. I mean, more librarians means more enchantment books for me, right? While I was making new converts, I uh, quite accidentally discovered that you can actually pick up entities in this pack. Needless to say, I thought, man, this is going to make this a lot easier. We're going to have a lot of librarians. I knew I was going to need a lot of emeralds for this endeavor, so I started trading apples with the goblins. 
I also deforested the area a little bit, and I used the bark to make paper, which I then traded with the librarians. One dude even bought unwanted enchant books, so we sold him all of those for five emeralds apiece. At one point, one of the monks had discovered the fine art of Lucky Explorer 3. Which we quickly applied to a new pair of diamond boots. And I took those bad boys out for a run. All in unexplored blocks, because that's important. And man, would we watch the emeralds start flowing in then. While we were on safari, we came across what looked like a nether fortress just sitting out in the middle of the woods. It had all kinds of goodies inside, but especially this new fancy soul sword. There were also wither skeleton spawners here that I made a note of to come back for later. So I did a little remodeling here at the church. As you can see, I'll show you. Um, I made the decision that this town really wanted to be librarians. Like, everybody at this town, they told me they wanted to be librarians. Like, this this Fletcher guy, he didn't want to be a Fletcher anymore. He said, I don't want to be a Fletcher. I don't know why. I, I've always wanted to be a librarian. So, being that I'm, I'm super kind and generous, and that we can do shift, right-click, and pick people up, I figured, hey, you know, the least I can do is help this guy out. Let's ha let him become a librarian. Because from what I hear, they, that's what they, they all want. They all want to be librarians, see? So we can just take everybody in this town, and we can bring them on down here, and they can all become librarians. See? See how kind and nice I am? So I'm going to go through the town, and I'm going to grab everybody. I'm going to break all of their workbenches so they lose their professions, and I'm going to bring them over here to the church where we're going to make them all librarians now. So, yeah. I wanted to start stripping some of the enchants off of some of my older things, but I realized I was going to need experience for that. So I began grinding the kills. And grinding the kills. Eventually I had enough experience that I could strip mending off my old pickaxe, so I used that and started combining the different enchant books I would want to put on my new farming sword. It did not take long to run out of experience again. So we started killing more zombies. 
That includes you, Shorty. And we killed more zombies. Until we can combine all of the books together that we wanted to put on the sword. But that meant we were going to need another 41 levels of experience to put it on there. So it was back to killing zombies again. Only to be interrupted by winter having set in, where we had to huddle around the campfire and drain down some heat stones just to stay alive. But once it was warm, it was back to the grind. Finally, after grinding up 41 levels of experience, I decided to take a moment and spend some diamonds and some amethyst shards and reforge a diamond sword until it was an epic sword. And then, at the cost of all those levels we had ground up, we had the perfect experience farming sword. Soul Devourer 3 for a ton of more experience. Looting 3 and Scavenger 3, which gives us more drops. And then Mending on there, which makes it last forever. We even named it XP Reaper. Let me tell you, this improves everything about grinding kills. Oh, I even went back and added Prospector 3 to the sword, and now we get emeralds from the kills too. Now it's just back to the monastery so we can train up all the monks. <laughs> 